What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today I've been doing another Destiny 2 video and today we discuss the latest Void Dark on the season of the Drifter. The good and the bads. No holding back, no shits given. I owe it to you guys to be completely real with my opinion on what we saw about the content for the coming months. But before we go any further guys, if you do enjoy the video and would like to show your support you can by smashing that like button. And if you are new around here and enjoy daily Destiny 2 videos, be sure to subscribe. So the main points of the Joker's World DLC taken from this Vidoc are as follows. We finally get to go into the Drifter's ship and see what is in there. And it isn't what we expected. Well people, to be honest, I didn't expect anything. While the main focus of the Joker's World it seems is a new mode called Gambit Prime. Basically a competitive Gambit mode. Something of past which went by the code name of Mamba. This new Gambit mode consists of a single round with high risk, high reward. At first they say it will feel like the normal Gambit mode, but as you progress on and unlock perks, it will change over time. Couple of things that have changed with this new Gambit Prime mode compared to normal Gambit. Well, now players can drain modes directly from the enemy team. There are new mechanics during the Prime Evil fight, which require teams to work together, much like what we'd see facing off against a raid boss. Sounds quite cool. With this Prime mode also, new armor sets have been introduced which allow players to be represented by armor for select roles. Four roles, four variants of armor, each meaning your role is set for a single thing. Or each armor is unlocked for you doing a certain thing while playing Gambit. Reaper is the player who kills as many combatants as possible. The Collector is the player who collects those molts. The Sentry is the player who clears up the Taken to help deal damage against the Prime Evil. And the Invader is the person who invades with the Queen Breakers and wipes out the entire team in a matter of seconds. Note that these armor sets will be unlocked for the various different things they are represented by. Like I said, uh, banking molts to unlock the Collector set. Invade and kill for the Invader set. As simple as that, people. But they do mention these roles ain't a set thing. If a team wants to go into a match or wear the invader set, they can, just to confuse the other team I guess. There will be two maps coming, Arcadia, which will be available within the first week, and then we will get a second map called Deep Six on the second week. When the Joker's World drops after the first Gambit match, we will then get access to a new PvE activity called The Reckoning, which takes place on the Plains of the Nine. We see that the Drifter and the Nine are up to no good working together, cooking something up within this trailer. Dredging. Nah, no, not anymore. It's Drifter now. Season of the Drifter, there's some super deep lore with Drifter and the Nine. They're working with him for some reason. The reckoning is what I can imagine Mayhem Cross the Forge would be like. Seems quite fun to be honest. Chaos, bullets, explosions, fire the lot. Bring it on. A lot like a Manic Horde mod where we have to push forward through stages. At first we will only have access to tier 1 but over time tier 2, 3, 4 and so forth will unlock. Thing is this is tied to that Gambit Prime mod. The Reckoning and Gambit Prime are like back and forward activities meaning I believe players will have to play both to progress in both. That I ain't sure about if I'm honest. Gambit I ain't too keen on. I mean Gambit Prime may change my mind on that but the Reckoning does sound quite fun to me. But hey if I have to sacrifice one round of Gambit here and there to play the Reckoning I will do so. So what else is there people? Well there are new pinnacle weapons, one for the Crucible and one for the Vanguard. The Crucible one's called the Recluse and the Vanguard's one is called the Oxygen SR3. We can also see what I believe the main benefits of each weapons will be. The Recluse kills with any weapon, improves his weapon's damage for a short time and the Oxygen Dragonfly deals more damage based on the number of precision hits made beforehand. The Fawn also returns people, which we've known about for ages now. The quest for this I believe starts on week 2. So what else is there? Are there any more exotics? Well I believe there's one more exotic quest as they state there's two exotic quests. Obviously one's for the fawn, the other I guess would be for the rose which we saw leaked to last week. But we do see in small print people there is an exotic quest for annual pass holders only. Interesting. So if there's only two exotic weapon quests and one's for annual pass holders only? Hmm that makes you think people. Also with the Joker's World they will introduce power surge bounties. These allow players to catch up and get to that 640 power level in a matter of 2 hours. Great for those who are stuck in the past and can't get past a certain power level. There are some great looking weapons too which we have seen. Can't wait to never get any of these because my RNG absolutely sucks ass. Gambit private matches will also be introduced. Uh, there will be new emotes as you can imagine. A new spring event called the Revelry. And while we play all of this, Bungie are working on the next season which is called the Season of the Opulence. This is just the beginning of a conversation that we're going to have with you about where Destiny can go. Right now the team's upstairs testing Season of Opulence. We're already building plans for how to make the thing comes out. After that, even better. There's a thing that comes out after that? Well, oh, <laughs> for the last one. <laughs> Until then, 
Go check out Gamba Prime. So plenty to look forward to guys, I won't lie. Destiny may even pull me back from Apex Legends, we will see. Things I didn't see or hear anything from though within this Viduck, which are a little underwhelming are, no new exotic armor pieces, like what? No new raid or raid lair, like what? Only two new exotic weapons? Both are part of quests? Really? No new vanguard weapons or armor? No new crucible weapons or armor? Only pinnacle stuff? Nothing on faction rallies? We knew nothing was coming with the trials and as we know the 9 now are too busy up their drifters but so we ain't getting that till at least September. So yeah, many many questions still remain. What I do hope is there will be hidden exotics somewhere within the game which they didn't want to let slip and there will be exotic armors too for us to find and use. Maybe even new vanguard and crucible weapons and armors too, that would be quite cool, but I could be just dreaming here people. But yeah, that's about it. But there are no doubt other points in the video I ain't covered, but nothing of real importance in my opinion. Now what I normally do is break down this video massively and bring you guys a massive detailed video of it, which I may do later today. I just wanted to get a quick video out for you guys, covering what I think is the most important parts. I hope you enjoyed it, if you did leave a like, it really does help out. If you are new around here and enjoy daily Destiny 2 videos, be sure to subscribe, and if you never want to miss the video I upload turn notifications on by hitting that bell button but guys tell me what you think about this season of the drifter and hopefully I will see you on that next one